Her dance posture is not standard by her mother being vomit blood. The mother used her foot on her back to correct the movement, pressing her body downward. Because of the force, her spine was broken and she was paralyzed from then on. She was unable to move. But even so, the paranoid mother did not want to let her go. Her mother put gears on her back and arranged her in the desired position. She made her into a musical octet. All this was seen by Fiona. In order not to be killed by the teacher, she chose to become her teacher's accomplice. After more than 10 years, Fiona became a community caregiver. One day she received a newcomer, Lucy, at the bus stop. Lucy has different pupils. She jokes that Lucy's body contains the souls of two people. Lucy was not convinced. Fiona takes her to an elderly person's home. Lucy quickly calms down the difficult old man. Fiona was satisfied. Then they came to an old castle. Fiona reversed her attitude. She scolded Lucy to stay put. She went into the castle alone. Lucy waited in the car for a while, but did not see Fiona come out, fearing that something had happened to her. Then she got out of the car to check the situation. The desolate castle was tangled with vines. If she hadn't seen Fiona go inside with her own eyes, she would never have believed that people lived here. She pushed open the door and saw Joan, a very sick old woman, was lying in bed with a ventilator. Fiona was standing by the bed. She saw Lucy barge in. She didn't blame her. She praised her for doing the right thing. She introduced Joan to Lucy. Joan was a famous dance teacher when she was young. Many parents referred their children to her. But that was a long time ago. It's been a long time since Joan got sick and no one came to visit her. Strangely enough, Lucy found that Joan's ivy bed was full of blood. Her nails were starting to turn green because they hadn't been treated for a long time. Lucy tried to help her cut her nails, but Fiona stopped her when asked why she didn't send Joan to a nursing home. Fiona said that it was her last wish to die at home. The castle was said to have a treasure, but she searched all the rooms but found nothing. Hearing this, Lucy stared at the key on Joan's chest. Then they left the castle. Lucy found her boyfriend Jack. Tell him what she saw in the castle today. Hearing that there was a treasure inside the castle, Jack was impressed. He desperately wants to change his life. Lucy is not happy with his idea. They break up. Back home. Lucy hears his father on the phone with his new girlfriend. She doesn't understand. It's been less than eight months since her mother died. Her father couldn't resist the idea of letting his new girlfriend live in the house. Impulsively, she got into an argument with her father. She had the idea of moving out in a trance. She saw her mother beside her. She finds Jack. She agrees to go to the castle to find the treasure. In the darkness of the night, they climbed into the castle through the window and searched around the house. But except for the dolls on the bed, and the taxidermy animals on the table. Nothing else was found. Just when they were about to give up, they saw the closed door at the end of the corridor. This was the only room that was locked. The treasure must be in here. Lucy remembered the key around Joan's neck, so she slowed down and went to the room. She cautiously took out the key, but when they tried to open the door, but when they tried to open the door, they found that the key would not open at all. Jack was very anxious. He kicked the door open. They were stunned by what they saw. He lifted the white veil. A dry body appeared in front of him. Lucy wasn't afraid. She thought the treasure was hidden here. The keyhole at the dry body's feet caught her attention. Lucy inserted the key in her hand into the hole. The dry corpse on the stage began to spin continuously. It was making an ominous music, fearing that the music would be heard. Jack broke the neck of the corpse. At that moment, there was a sudden eerie sound of footsteps from upstairs. They got scared and rushed to find an exit to get out of here. But they found the doors and windows were sealed. Lucy thought of an open window in Joan's room. She took Jack to the room. They found that Joan was gone from the bed, leaving only a pool of blood. Lucy said the window had been locked as well. Jack started to find tools to pry the window. At that moment, their friend seemed to be possessed and started to touch the mirror. Joan's face suddenly appeared in the mirror. He was then pulled into a spooky room. Three girls dressed in clothes were dancing around at him. The knives in their hands kept slashing at him. He collapses in a pool of blood. His disappearance made the remaining two even more uncomfortable. Lucy waits for death. She suddenly realizes that the room where the body was kept might have a way out. So she goes to the room. She finds Joan, who has been paralyzed in bed for years, sitting at the dining room table. She held out her hands to Lucy. Lucy was scared, but she reached out and took her hands in hers. A miraculous thing happened. All her previous memories came back to Lucy's mind. When she was young, she was a famous dance teacher. If her students got one move wrong, she would send them out of the classroom harshly. Until one day, a girl scream came from outside the house. She rushed to the house to take a look. She found the girl dead under her daughter's mouth. She and her daughter Anna were both vampires. They had always lived in the castle, but the lively Anna was full of desire for the outside world. One day she ran outside when her mother wasn't looking. Before she could feel the taste of freedom, she was burned by the hot sun and collapsed. Her mother arrives and takes her back. The unruly Anna made her mother very angry. To keep her from leaving the house, her mother locked her in her room. She forced her to perform perfect dance moves. If she couldn't do it, she put her foot on Anna's back. She kept forcing her to lower her back until Anna couldn't get up anymore. She was so cruel. She took Anna, who had a broken spine, and fitted her with parts and posed her beautifully. She made her into an octave box so that she could keep spinning forever. 
When Lucy opened her eyes again, Joan was long gone. Jexy's voice came from outside the door. Joan had already targeted him. She opened her mouth to enjoy the food. At that moment, the door in the room suddenly opened. Lucy looked at the approaching shadow on the wall. She ducked into the room beside her. She turned around and found that it was Anna's room. Anna was spinning around by herself. Suddenly she stepped off the stage and searched for Lucy by smell. Suddenly Anna grabbed Lucy's neck, knocked her to the ground. Luckily, she was not very aggressive. Lucy knocked her out. Just as she was about to leave, Fiona pushed the door open and came in. She knocked Lucy out. When she woke up again, she found her strapped to the operating table. In order to help her teacher survive, Fiona had already killed many people, but she wasn't going to do anything to Lucy. Joan pushed Anna in. Then she went to Lucy and cut her belly with her nails. The blood was pouring out. Joan picks up the insect chrysalis next to her and holds it up high. She chanted a strange incantation. Then, she puts the chrysalis into Lucy's belly. Then she takes a new pupa and shoves it into Anna's neck. This is an ancient form of soul exchange. Joan took the stapler and stapled Lucy's eyes shut. In a trance, Lucy seemed to see her mother's figure. She was lying on the operating table, in pain and struggling. And then a moth flew out of her mouth. Anna did the same. The two moths exchanged directions and the air and flew into the girl's mouths again. The soul exchange was successful. Fiona brought her to Joan. Joan stroked her face affectionately. The girl in front of her possessed the soul of her daughter. She missed her daughter with a deep sense of longing. Lucy stared at herself in the mirror. She found that her eyes had turned the same color. Joan kept telling Lucy to start dancing. She commended Lucy with her baton. Lucy didn't cooperate, and she tried to hit her. Lucy grabbed the scissors on Fiona's bite and stabbed her. Fiona is dead. That Lucy did not hesitate to kill Joan again. As Fiona said before, Lucy had a soul's living inside her. After her mother's death, her mother was worried about her and stayed in her body. The soul swapped just now. Lucy's mother's soul was exchanged. The mother is now in Anna's body. Knowing everything, Lucy held Anna in her arms. This was the closest Lucy had been to her since her mother's death. The next day they went to the high place. Having succeeded in guarding her daughter, the mother could leave with a sense of satisfaction. She looked at the little bird flying freely in the sky and leapt down. Anna, who had been held captive by her vampire mother for so long, was truly free? The film is about a mother who is extremely controlling. She doesn't want her daughter to leave her, so she makes her into a music box and keeps it with her forever. Two mothers in the film are in stark contrast. Lucy's mother is selfless and has been silently protecting her since her death. Anna's mother, by contrast, shows extreme control over her daughter. Love and bondage brings only harm. Only when children are given enough space can they fly freely in the air.